Monetary Policy There are two main ways for the government to manage the economy, fiscal policy and monetary policy. This video is about monetary policy. Another one discusses fiscal policy. The objectives of monetary policy are to keep inflation under control, while at the same time supporting the level of employment. Balancing these objectives is not always easy. Monetary policy is usually the responsibility of a country's central bank, also called the Federal Reserve Bank in the United States. Central banks try to reach their goals by controlling the quantity of money that circulates in the economy, which in turn determines the rate of interest. Let's first see why interest rates are important. Remember that if you save money, you receive interest from the bank. And if you borrow money, you need to pay interest. So interest can be seen as the cost of money or the price of money. If interest rates are high, Borrowing is expensive, and people prefer to leave their money in the bank so it earns interest. On the other hand, if interest rates are low, then money is cheap and people will borrow more in order to buy durable goods like cars or to invest in improving their homes or in a business. Low interest rates can increase output, but only if there is spare capacity or unemployment in the economy. If the economy is already operating near full capacity, then lower interest rates will just lead to more inflation, as more money is circulating to chase a constant supply of goods and services. So, the central bank wants the interest rate to be low enough to promote economic activity, but at the same time manage the risk of inflation getting out of control. To achieve this goal, the central bank determines the federal funds rate, which is its target interest rate for banks to lend to each other. The way that the central bank tries to achieve this target interest rate is by controlling the money supply. Keep in mind that notes and coins are only a small part of the money supply. Bank deposits and securities that are easily converted into cash are much larger components of the money supply today. So, when we say the central bank is increasing the money supply or printing money, we usually mean that it is increasing the amount of deposits in the financial system. There are three main ways to control the money supply. The first and most important method is through open market operations. Here, the central bank buys government bonds in the open market from investors. The money that has been created to buy these bonds is deposited at banks and begins to circulate in the economy. Stimulating the economy by increasing the money supply is called an expansionary monetary policy. On the other hand, the central bank can reduce the money supply by selling bonds that it owns, thereby taking money out of the financial system. This is called a contractionary monetary policy and happens when there are concerns about inflation. The central bank also impacts the money supply by setting the interest rate it charges other banks, called the discount rate. A final way to control the money supply is through the reserves it requires banks to hold. This is called the reserve ratio requirement and refers to the percentage of deposits that a bank must keep in reserves. The more money that banks need to keep in reserve, the less money is circulating in the economy. Although the central bank has a variety of tools it can use, controlling the money supply is not easy. Policymakers can never be sure of the exact consequences of their actions on the economy and how long it takes for their decisions to have an impact. That is why central bankers keep an eye on economic data all the time. That concludes the intro to the money supply. Check our other videos for more insights. Brought to you by Sim Institute.